ever picture the concept of time travel? To go back and change one little thing in order to see what might change in the present? Well, turns out that a lot of people actually had this thought, and a few are, well, not exactly the friendliest of people. Now before I begin this video guys, I want to explain that I apologize for any outside noise that may interfere with the audio. There is a lot of stuff going on in my dormitory right now, and many people are moving around, so we're going to have to work with that. During World War II, it is no secret that the Germans were attempting to create newer and more devastating weaponry in order to waver the war in their favor. I mean, heck, look at this tank right here. Well, allegedly, the Germans were also attempting to create something called the Wunderwaffe, and yeah, you Call of Duty people will probably know what that is. According to a Polish journalist and author, Igor Wachowski, the man who proposed the idea of such a creation in his 2000 book, The Truth About the Wonder Weapon. Referring to it as the Nazi Bell, Wachowski wrote that he first discovered the existence of the bell by reading transcripts from an interrogation of former Nazi SS officer Jacob Sporenberg. He was shown these allegedly classified transcripts in 1997 by an unnamed Polish intelligence contract. Igor's job was to simply translate the transcripts into Polish, and he was not allowed to make any copies. Unfortunately, there is no evidence of these transcripts, however, Wachowski's story would then be given a wider audience when British author Nick Cook retold the story in his own book, even adding in his own views. Allegedly, the experiment was carried out by the third rank scientists working for the SS in the German facility known as the Giant, near the Wachowski's mine and close to the Czech border. The bell was described as being a device made out of hard and heavy metals approximately 2.7 meters wide and 3.7 to 4.6 meters in height, having the shape similar to that of a large bell. According to an interview with Wachowski by Cook, this device ostensibly contains two counter-rotating cylinders which would be filled with a mercury-like substance, violet in color. This metallic liquid would be co-named Serum 525 and was stored in a tall, thin thermos flask a meter high encased with lead. Wolkowski described the bell when activated as having an effect zone expanding out 150 to 200 meters. Within the zone, crystals would then form in animal tissues, blood would gel and separate while plants would decompose into a grease-like substance. Wachowski also said that five to seven original scientists working on the project died in the course of the tests. Based upon certain external indications, Wachowski stated that the ruins of a concrete framework dubbed the Henge near the mines may have once been served as a test rig for the experimentation in anti-gravitation propulsion systems generated by the bell. Wachowski's statements along with Cook's views prompted further injunction about the device from various American authors including Joseph P. Farrell, Jim Mars, and even Henry Scott. Scott's concluded that the violet mercury-like substance described by Wachowski could only be red mercury because normal mercury has no fluid compounds according to conventional wisdom. Stevens even presented a story attributed to German scientist Otto Kearney as told by a 13-year-old Greg Roof around 1961, which alleged that the concave mirror on top of the device, which seems similar to the description of the bell, provided the ability to see images from the past during its operations. Wachowski speculates that the bell ended up in a Nazi-friendly South American country while Cook, on the other hand, speculated that it was moved to the United States as part of a deal made by the SS General Hans Kammler. Farrow, however, speculated that it is recovered as part of the Kecksburg UFO incident, a theory that we will actually be touching a pace upon in a later video, but this is why I referred to time travel in the beginning. See, this incident involved a large bell or acorn-shaped UFO crashing into the forest of Kettsburg, PA in 1965. Not exactly a time period when World War II was happening. This has raised some speculation and a lot of conspiracy theorists have jumped onto the bandwagon, but we'll be discussing that later, so we'll try to debunk a few things. But what do you guys believe? Do you think that it's a possibility that Nazis could have created a weapon with so much power, or is it simply just a story made up by an author to gain some publicity? 
yeah all right just discuss those down in the comments below and i'll see you guys next time thank you for staying with us to the end if you enjoyed this journey hit the like button down below and leave a comment in the comment section i always consider suggestions for new videos and topics so do not be shy also do not forget to subscribe in order to stay up to date on all things unexplained until then i hope to see you again next time as we take another trip into the realm of the unknown